Hey, what's up? I decided to write this message sandbox because I had to look at some messages and I didn't want to read about them because that's boring. So I decided to write a utility and it l lets you take a look at what uh, what messages forms process. And so we've got our window here. This is our second window, our sandbox form. And this is the one that processes the messages and relays them back to the main form to be added to the data grid view. I add the messages at the top of the data grid view so you can kind of see them being added a bit nicer, a bit better. And you can show this as a dialog because my initial intention was to take a look at this activate message. By the way, so long as your cursor is in the data grid view, nothing will be added to it. So. It just makes it easier to click on stuff if you have to. And you can also freeze it. You can completely freeze the um, data grid view so nothing can be added to it. I mean, the messages are still processed and sent back to the, the form. They're just not added to the data grid view. You can also dump the um, messages. Uh, yeah, the messages in the data grid view to file. You can also delete your dump. It's pretty cool. And the message filter down here will filter out by default very frequently or uh, frequently processed messages. So um, if I remove 32 here, you'll notice that this is something that is processed every time the mouse moves over the window. So we uh, that is the default filter. You can add whatever filter you want manually, or you can right click on specific messages wherever you want as long as it's selected and hit filter this and we'll add the message index to the filter as well you can right click on a message and hit look up and wherever you wherever you select it will find the um, the message ID and it'll look that up on MSDN of course And if it doesn't have a message ID, then it's just going to take you to this web page here. This is a good reference for messages. It's pretty complete. Well, I don't know if it's complete, but it has all the ones that are not really listed in the message ID column here. I decided to name um, message ID as like the labels here. I don't, in MSDN, I saw that they use message ID for the numeric representation. I didn't like that. I just use message index for the number and message ID for what it should be named as. Just makes sense to me. And you may be wondering how I got the names for the messages, the identifiers here. Um, I went into some .NET 4 framework code uh, using my disassembler, whatever it is, the um, yeah, the IL disassembler. And I got this big ass function that has a huge switch statement in it. I gotta find it. There it is. Message index to string. I just took this out of um, wherever. And now I'm gonna show you what I made this for. So let's go to the. Um, message box lib here. This is a, a class lib that I'm working on that represents the uh, message dialog. It's, it's an imitation of the standard message dialog in my own style here. This is for the DevBox project and this is what it looks like. So you got normal message box there and then my message box. And this is why I needed to process Windows messages because when you click on another form when this is a dialog a bunch of messages are sent to this uh, dialog here to indicate that it needs to flicker or something so initially I was flickering the border but then I decided to shake the form because it looks so much cooler so there's the typical error dialog I can change the icon set and the button set up a bit so right now I'm not changing the icon to the original one because I use a different enumeration with my um, 
dialogue bo uh, yeah my message box dialogue but they do have the same buttons when I change up the buttons so there's um, the warning icon or the warning dialogue and there's info you can change out the button set again abort to abort retry ignore that's what it'll look you've got the the default button of course and also the cancel button if there's a cancel button there's no there's none with this one here but pretty much any button that has the text cancel on it in the message dialog you can press exit and that's the cancel button I did that as well as well the minimum and maximum size of my message box dialog imitates the original one uh, pretty closely I did a, a couple adjustments to it though and I found system.sounds here you can use this static uh, well I don't know if the class is fully static but you can use these static members here to play sounds that you would commonly hear with the uh, met the standard message box dialog thing here is the VS message box class it imitates the message box class for .NET and it's pretty much the same thing except it adds a um, extension method to show the mess the message of an exception and it has th pretty similar overloads other than that Anyhow, that's it for this video. See you later.